What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're gonna continue with our database program and finish up the update section so that we can actually save our updated information using Kenter and Python. All right, in the last video, we built our little web form here that we can update our database records. In this video, we're gonna continue on and finish the save button so that we can actually save the things that we change. But before we get it started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee of just $27, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so we've got our, our program here, and we've got this update a record window that pops up when we click the edit record button over here and it pre-populates these form fields with whatever record we want to edit. Now we just need to fix this button to actually record when we press it. So that's what we're going to do in this video. And this isn't very hard. I just take a, a second or two. So let's come down to our edit function here. And at the bottom of this, we have our actual button here and we've got it pointed to the edit function. That's no good. We need to create a new function to actually save this stuff. So let's call this update and that should be okay. And now I'm just gonna come up here above here and let's just define update. And we don't need to pass anything in here. So like everything we've done always, we need to do a database connection and a cursor. So I'm just gonna paste that in here. And like always, we need to, uh, let's see, close our connection, commit any changes we make. And we also want to delete the stuff that's in those uh, those fields. So, well, first let's just do this. And where we go? All right, in our update guy. And like I said, we want to delete all those things. So let's look at the, I think it's the query. No, the submit button. At the bottom of this, we have all this code to clear the boxes on the original window screen. So let's just copy this and paste that in here because we definitely want to do that. Well, actually, let's do it after we've closed our connection. Now these boxes aren't named correctly, so let's go down to our edit field and our boxes are fname dash editor, last name dash editor, city dash editor, address, everything dash editor. So we can just come up here and kind of paste all of this in. Oh, you know what? We don't really want to edit these or we don't want to actually do that anyway. We just want to close the whole thing. So we'll just close this whole window and we're done. And that should be a lot easier. So, okay. So now let's just worry about what code do we need to actually update our database record? And we've sort of, I don't know if we looked at this, before, but we want to see dot execute. And then the command, we want to use these triple quotes so that we could do this on multiple lines. Those are doc strings or doc types. I can never remember doc string, doc, doc type string, maybe. I don't know. You can look it up. Doesn't matter. Three, three quotation marks to open and three quotation marks to close is what we're looking at. So what we want to do is we want to update and we want to update our table, which is addresses. SSES addresses. Yeah, that's right. And then we want to set. And now we need to designate what we want to set. So remember when we first created our table, we named these columns these things. So that's what we're going to use down here. So we're going to go first underscore name equals and then call this first. And you'll see what this colon first is in just a second. Uh, last underscore name equals last, separating each of these with a comma, uh, address equals address. Now what do we got? City equals city, state equals colon state, and finally zip code equals zip code, All right? Okay, now we don't need a, uh, a comma for that last bit. 
I'm going to come down here and we need to continue on with our SQL statement. So when you update SQL, you update the table and then you set certain columns where certain things equal certain things. So we need to put a where clause in here where now OID, this is our primary key, where OID equals colon OID and then the three ending quotes. So actually get rid of those. Okay, so what we're saying is the record we've pulled up has a specific primary key. In our case, it's three, right? So we're saying update these things, these columns with this information for each one where our primary key, our OID equals some OID that we'll designate in a second here. In our case, it'll be three because we're updating record number three. But if you were update, updating record number 27, you would, you know, it would be 27, but it'll, it'll find that out on its own. So, all right, here, this is all the SQL command. That's, that does the things, but now we need to sort of designate what these things are, right? We have to tell our code what is colon city, what is colon state. And we do that just right after the comma here, and we just create a uh, Python dictionary bring this up. And inside of this dictionary, we just designate each of these things as the key value pair of the dictionary. This these things are the key. So uh, we're going to go com or uh, quote first. Now you don't put the colon in front of it, you just use first, and then a colon afterward because it's a dictionary. That's how you separate key value pairs in a dictionary. Now we need to just say, what is the data we want to put in there? And this will be, if we go down to our edit, would be this, right? And we need to dot get that. Now, we also need to make a quick change to our edit function because these guys are being used inside this function. If we want to use them in another function, we need to make these global. So let's go create global variables for text box names. And then I'm just going to, for each of these, we just type in global and then the name, right? That's all we have to do. So let me just copy and paste this a few times. So last name, address, city, state, zip code. And then we can just pop each of these in. Address underscore editor, uh, city underscore editor, state underscore editor, and zip code underscore editor. Okay, so if we save that, that will work. Now we can use these, each of these up here. So now all we have to do, is just kind of go through here and for each of these go last. And again, that's this guy right here, colon, and then it's L underscore name editor dot get. As we've gotten things a lot, we get things all the time. Uh, let's see, the next one is address and that's address underscore editor dot get. This is the boring part city colon city underscore editor dot get and state colon state underscore editor dot get and zip code which is zip code underscore editor dot get and then one more we also have to have and that is OID colon, and let's call this record underscore ID, right? Now this, we need to designate up here. So let's go record underscore ID equals delete underscore box dot get 
And that is, if you think way back in the first bit of our code here, when we, let's see, let's just run this real quick and see here. So it's this box right here. So when we show our records and we type a thing in here, this is the delete, uh, delete box right here. And so we need to get three, which is the primary ID, right? So if we go back to our code here, that's going to be all the way down here with our buttons. Create a delete button. Delete button. No, it's going to be the box. So it's a delete box label. No, right here. Delete box, right? So copy that. Come back up here to our update function. And that's just this right here, delete box. Okay, so now, now the reason why we have to tack this on here is because where OID is OID, that's this thing right here, we need to define that. And that's where we do that right here. You'll notice these are just in order. So we have first, last, address, city, state, zip, and O, OID. So same thing here, first, last, address, city, state, zip, OID. I'm not sure that's necessary, absolutely, but, um, that's what you sort of do. So, okay, so I think that looks good. We're, this is our SQL statement. Update addresses, set each of these things where our primary key equals, equals the primary key. And then down here, you just sort of designate them. And this is just the way you do it when you have multiple things that you want to update. You know, in the past, I don't know if we looked at update in this specific set of series, a video, video series, but you don't have to do all of this stuff if you're just updating one column. But in this case, we're updating many columns. So we have to sort of make this Python dictionary. So all right, let's save this. And let's give this a run real quick. Let's clear the screen. And we have show records, Tina Miller three. So let's go edit record. So let's go, it's not 21 Tina Avenue, it's 21 Tina Street, right? So now if we save this record, we can close this. Now if we wanna edit records again, this thing pops up and now it's 21 Tina Street. All right, so it actually did it. Now this doesn't actually, once we click this, you know, this thing should disappear. So how do we do that? We can just give this pull up our code. After we commit and close, we can just go, what did we call this other window? Uh, let's go down to the buttons. So much code going on, I'm losing track of things here. <laughs> All right, so edit, we run the edit command or edit function, which is this guy and we're creating this editor window. Okay, so that's the name of it. So in our update function afterwards, we can just go editor dot destroy. Is that the command we want? Uh, let's see, I think it is. We need that, I think maybe. All right, let's save this and run it. All right, so three, edit record, Let's change this back to Avenue, save it, that did not work. Editor is not defined. Well, let's make this global. Global editor, will that do it? I'll try it again. All right, so select ID three, edit record, Avenue, Change this to 22 Tina Avenue. Save it, boom, it disappears. We can open it back up again. It's at 22 Tina Avenue. Let's change this back to street. Save the record, boom, it disappears. We can edit it again. It's back to street. All right, so that is looking better, looking pretty good. Uh, we don't need this entire extra stuff. We could just change this to this if we want. So let's do that real quick. So when we edit, instead of 400 by 600, let's try 400 by 400. Let's run this again. 
three, edit record. That's a little bit better. Let's try what? 300 maybe? Just playing at this point. Three, edit record. All right, that's a little better. We'll leave it like that for now. So there's a few things we want to do here. Uh, for, for the first thing is this select ID thing. We could show records and get our list of IDs, but that's not great for me. Maybe we should have a drop down box, right? That has all the records in it that we could just select. Maybe we'll do that in the next video. And also, if we don't put anything in there at all and click edit records, we just get a blank screen. So that's kind of weird. We need to sort of fix that. So we'll look at that in the next couple of videos as well. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. So you pay just $27 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 50,000 students learning to code. My name is John Elder from codemy.com. We'll see you in the next video.